One of the more common decisions we have to make as software developers is whether to build or buy. Recently, I've been presented with this choice quite a few times whilst developing my new course platform for things such as video streaming, analytics, and handling payments. Perhaps the most conflicting decision I had to make recently, however, when it came to build versus buy was related to user authentication and whether or not to roll my own auth or pick an off-the-shelf solution. Initially, I decided to try and build it myself and went about doing so, making use of good security practices and the cryptography packages provided by the Go standard library. Definitely don't implement those by yourself. As it turns out, however, perhaps to the surprise of no one watching this video, rolling my own auth ended up being a mistake, but not for the reason you might think. Before I explain why it was a mistake, let me first give a little more context. As I mentioned at the start, I've been building out my own course platform, or web application, or whatever you want to call it, in order to host my upcoming course on building CLI applications in Go, as well as any future courses that I also have planned, which there are a few. Rather than using an off-the-shelf solution such as Teachable or Kajabi, I decided, for better or worse, to build my own website from scratch as I intend to add features and customizations that would almost be impossible to add on a platform I don't control. For example, I currently have a quiz component implemented that looks a bit like a terminal interface, which allows you to navigate and select the multiple choice questions using Vim key bindings. If I had decided to use a platform that I had mentioned before, then this would probably be impossible to implement. And of course, I'm a software developer, so using an off-the-shelf solution just feels kind of weird. Therefore, because of this, I decided to build the entire platform myself. However, pretty shortly into the implementation, I was faced with a choice. Roll my own auth or use an off-the-shelf solution. This is actually a pretty common build versus buy decision. And typically, over the past few years, I've defaulted to using an auth provider rather than implementing it myself. However, in my case, I actually had a few reasons as to why I didn't want to use a third-party provider, at least from the get-go. The first of these is that I wanted to have full control over my authentication data and my user flow, which would allow me to better customize how a user interacted with my app application. This meant I would be able to do some more custom onboarding flows, such as automatically creating an account when a user unlocks a video by entering their email. This would allow me to let the user log in as easily as possible without needing to navigate away from the video they were currently watching. The second and most major reason as to why I decided to roll my own auth was that I eventually planned to make this platform open source so that others can use it to host their own courses. This meant in order to be as versatile as possible, the platform itself would need to be self-sufficient and not force any users to use a third-party authentication service. So implementing authentication within the platform initially felt like the right approach, given my intended future requirements. And so I went about implementing it, adding in session-based authentication into my application code. However, as I mentioned, this did end up being a mistake, not because of any technical limitation or anything being insecure, Instead, because of how much time I was spending on it. For example, whilst it was a seamless user experience to be able to allow a user to both unlock a video and to create an account by simply submitting their email address, there was a number of potential user flow issues I would need to consider. For example, how would I perform reconciliation if my email system failed to send the user an activation email, which contained a link for them to be able to reset their password? Or how would I accurately prevent somebody from just spamming the form with a bunch of email addresses in order to degrade my email reputation. In addition to these more custom flows, I also had to think about everything else that one needs to consider when it comes to authentication. These include simple things like ensuring that you're using a secure cryptographic hash function when securing passwords, such as argon2 or bcrypt, making sure to only store these hashed passwords inside of your database. However, in addition to these more simple concepts, there's also a number of nuanced things you need to consider as well, such as making sure you're able to handle 
handle password recovery, such as password resets, account deletion if you happen to be planning on selling to the EU, which I am, and some other more technical things, such as rate limiting, in order to prevent your login endpoints from being susceptible to credential stuffing attacks. Whilst none of this is difficult in and of itself, all of these considerations, when stacked together, ended up taking a lot of time, and there was still something else I needed to implement. User management. This meant adding in functionality so that users could manage their own profile, such as being able to add or even change their primary email address. Adding in the ability to link other social accounts, such as Discord or GitHub, as well as more admin or support-based functions such as being able to help a user recover their accounts in the event that they forget their email or even their password, as well as preventing signups using compromised email password pairs. Ultimately, implementing all of this was starting to take away from the core of my product, building the actual course, instead forcing me to focus on the context. I've talked a bit about core versus context a few times on YouTube. In fact, recently, I actually had a long conversation on the Backend Banter podcast with Lane Wagner from Boot.dev, where we talked about rolling our own authentication. The simple credential email password isn't that difficult, isn't that difficult. So yeah, that kind of aged like milk from my end. By the way, Lane is a really smart guy, and I really enjoyed the conversation with him. In any case, I ended up coming to the conclusion that rolling my own auth was just taking away too much time from me actually building the course, as I was spending hours upon hours thinking about all the ways that my site could be broken instead of just focusing on delivering actual user value. Ultimately, this is where I think a third C of core versus context comes in, especially when building a product. This C is compromise. So core versus context versus compromise. This compromise was that even though I wanted to have my own authentication implementation so that I was able to customize it how I want, I didn't have endless amounts of time. And because I can't achieve everything I want to all at once, then I need to compromise on what I can achieve first, which in this case is getting the actual course completed and the platform functional. So when it came to actually building the platform to one day support open source and controlling the entire authentication flow, I had to move them both to the backlog and realign my priorities. This meant migrating away from my initial implementation to using another provider, but doing so in a way that would mean I could easily swap back in the future, either back to my own homeworld implementation, of which I still have inside of my Git history, or perhaps to something else. To achieve this, I went about abstracting my authentication layer, making use of interfaces and provider implementations in order to be able to easily swap them out. Whilst this does mean there's an extra hoop to jump through when it comes to dealing with my chosen auth provider, it's now pretty trivial for me to be able to implement and swap to a different provider if I need to. So who did I end up choosing as my authentication service? Well, I ended up going with Clark. Yes. Clark, not clerk. Whilst I often mispronounce things, in this case, the Cambridge Dictionary agrees with me. Clark, Clark, Clark. As for why I chose Clark, well, an ex-colleague of mine absolutely loves it, and I do trust their opinion. Additionally, Clark also provides a number of components out of the box, meaning I didn't have to implement any of my user management components initially, which allowed me to make up some of the time I'd spent rolling my own auth. Whilst this does mean that my authentication flow is now different than I initially wanted, Clark is in fact rather flexible, and I actually think I prefer the auth flow that I now have using it. Additionally, Clark also has a pretty generous free tier, meaning I don't have to worry too much about spending until the course is at least making some revenue. So I decided to give it a go. However, whilst it did work, there are some caveats around it, specifically due to the fact that the components are built on the React framework. Fortunately, I was able to shoehorn it in into my Alpine.js and Go stack. And it is working. Pretty well, in fact. However, it's definitely not perfect. My biggest complaint is because it bundles React inside of its actual vanilla JavaScript implementation, now my JavaScript bundle is excessively large, which pretty much has killed all of the benefits of me not choosing to use React in the first place. Fortunately, through some HDMX magic using boost mode, I've managed to be able to mitigate this large bundle size, but still, 
it's not exactly great. However, there is a bit of a silver lining, as it's managed to act as a bit of forcing function for me to move away from using the pre-built Clark components, instead focusing on implementing them myself, which will allow me to eventually move towards either Clark headless mode or another provider anyway. So by using Clark, it's yet another compromise but one that will allow me to finish the course platform much quicker. As for my future plans when it comes to authentication on my course website, I'm at a bit of an impasse. The main goal that I currently have is to get the course finished, which, good news, should be available for early bird access by the time you watch this video, with the full release coming sometime in May. Currently, I have about 30 more videos to complete, which is going to bring the total to just over 120. Yeah, it's a bit of a chunky boy. However, once that's complete, I have a couple of roads I can take. I can either stick with Clark and move towards a headless mode once I have all of the implementation for my components complete, or I can move towards a more front-end heavy framework like React, especially as I want to do some more interactive features when it comes to my courses, where you'll be able to interact with a full dev environment. That one's going to be cool when I start looking at tools such as Tmux. However, on the other hand, I'm also interested in migrating to something like Keycloak as my auth provider, which will allow me to open the door to using other platforms in the future, specifically Leptos, which again, I really want to spend a bit of time this year learning and understanding. I actually tried looking at Leptos with Clark and I'm not smart enough to figure that one out. It starts to get kind of weird when you need to interface with JavaScript and given that Clark uses React under the hood, it just suddenly starts competing for who owns the actual DOM. So who knows where I'll end up. For the meantime, however, the main thing for me to focus on is delivering user value. And to be honest, when it comes to software, it doesn't actually matter that much because, well, you can pretty much just change it later on.